Integration in the complex realm is a pretty interesting subject, and it's strikingly different from integration back in real variable calculus. And that's in large part due to the fact that we're working in the complex plane, which is, of course, two-dimensional. So we integrate along curves here, similar to how we did back in multivariable calculus. But these are not just any curves. Say we define a curve in the complex plane by gamma, where gamma belongs to the set C1, meaning the set of continuously differentiable functions, or functions with continuous first derivatives. Gamma can be parameterized by a real variable t that's bound between two real numbers a and b. So gamma is a continuous mapping that takes the interval a, b onto the complex plane. Bear in mind that gamma belonging to C1 means that the real and imaginary parts of gamma have continuous first derivatives. Such a curve is called smooth, and the condition of smoothness is pretty important because it eliminates pathological cases like a curve sufficiently irregular to have an infinite length. Anyway, such smooth curves in the complex plane are called contours, and the entire subject of integrating complex valued functions is called contour integration. You might have some questions about contours, like can they have loops? Well, yeah, sure, why not? For example, in the contour shown in the bottom right of the screen, it can be considered as the union of two different contours, C1 and C2, where C1 is something called a closed contour. So for evaluating the integral along such a contour, you just have to apply the relevant theorems to each part of the contour and add them up. And the symbols for writing out contour integrals are given in the bottom left of the screen. And bear in mind that for integrals along closed contours, we have this little circle around the integral sign. We can also make contours that are piecewise smooth, and all we have to do is concatenate them into smooth curves. For example, in the diagram, the contour can be broken down into two different contours, gamma 1 and gamma 2, both being smooth, and they can be parameterized accordingly. And the integral along such a curve can be broken down as the sum of integrals along gamma 1 and gamma 2. So how do we integrate along contours? Well, for starters, you need a function f of z that's continuous along that contour. Let's call that contour gamma. So the integral over the contour gamma of the function f of z is pretty much the same thing as a line integral along the contour via some parameterization. So if z is parameterized by the curve gamma of t, where t belongs to the interval between a and b, this implies that dz equals gamma prime t dt. So this means that your integral over the contour gamma is an integral from a to b of f of gamma of t times gamma prime t dt. As a nice little example, consider the integration of the function f of z defined by the reciprocal of z on the unit circle centered at the origin. That is, z is parameterized by e to the i phi, where phi lies between 2 pi and 0. In this case, we have dz being i times e to the i phi d phi. So that means the integral over the contour gamma of f of z dz is actually an integral over the closed contour defined by the unit circle of 1 by z dz, and this here is actually the integral from 0 to 2 pi under our parameterization of 1 by e to the i phi times i times e to the i phi d phi. So we see some cancellation happening here, and we're left with i times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of d phi, which of course gives us 2 pi i. So that's the integral over the unit circle of 1 by z dz. And a noteworthy result here is that the integral over the closed contour c defined by the unit circle centered at the origin of 1 by, rather write this as z to the n, where n is an integer that's not negative 1 like the case we just evaluated. Using the periodicity of the complex exponential function e to the i phi, it can be shown that this thing always crashes to a big bad zero. Now, does the parameterization of the curve in question matter? 
Well, logically speaking, if it's the same continuous complex value function evaluated along the same curve, then the parameterization of that curve should not matter. That's speaking logically, but of course we can prove all of this mathematically by considering the integral of f of z along some curve parameterized by gamma. In other words, z is parameterized by gamma of t, and t belongs to the interval, terribly sorry about that, a, b. Okay, now let's parameterize the curve differently. Let's define a continuous mapping g that takes the set a, b to the set c, d, and let's pick from the set c1, that is the set of continuously differentiable functions, we pick from it a curve psi, such that psi takes the set CD to the complex plane. And we form a composed curve, gamma of t equal to psi of g of t. Now, what does this new parameterization mean for our integral? Well, the integral along gamma of the function f is the integral from a to b of f of gamma of t times gamma prime t dt. But wait, according to our new parameterization, we should have the integral from a to b of f of psi of g of t times psi prime of g of t, and because of the chain rule, we have g prime of t as well. Now, if I perform a substitution by letting g of t equal to s, well, in that case, the integral over gamma of the function f is now an integral from c to d of the function f of psi of s times psi prime of s, and of course this equation means that g prime of t dt equals ds. So we see that the integral over gamma of the function f is equal to the integral over psi of the function f, meaning that it's independent of whatever parameterization we choose to employ for the curve. It's time to show you a very important inequality. It's something that you'll use quite often when doing contour integration. And it's actually pretty simple. It states that the absolute value of the integral over some contour gamma of the function f is always going to be less than or equal to the integral over the same contour gamma of the absolute value of f. And this is pretty easy to prove as well because integrals are just Riemann sums. So we have the integral over gamma of the function f being equal to the integral from a to b of f of gamma of t gamma prime of t dt in the parameterized form. So writing this parameterized form of the integral in terms of the Riemann sum, we have the limit of the sum over i from 1 to n as n tends to infinity of f of gamma of ti times gamma prime of ti delta ti. So if I take absolute values now, then on the right-hand side, I'm going to have to make use of the triangle inequality. And I have the limit, as n tends to infinity, of the sum from i equals 1 to n. And because of the triangle inequality, I now have a less than or equal to sign of the absolute value of f of gamma of ti times gamma prime of ti times delta ti, and delta ti here is just something positive, so that can be taken outside of the modulus operator. Okay, so what exactly does this thing look like? Well, obviously, this would be the Riemann sum for the absolute value of it. So this implies that the absolute value of the integral over gamma of the function f is always less than or equal to the integral over gamma of the absolute value of s. Okay, cool. And finally, of course, this integral can be separated into real and imaginary parts. The integral over f would be equal to the integral uh, the integral of f over gamma would be equal to the integral over gamma of the real part u plus i times the integral over gamma of the imaginary part v as well. 
And that's pretty much it for the first video on contour integration. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about important concepts like the fundamental theorem of calculus in the complex form, as well as a couple other things, depending on how long the video is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.